Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. All right, ladies, welcome back to another episode. So today we have with us Morgan Klein, and Morgan is the co-founder and CEO of Burn Boot Camp, which is a franchise, and we're going to have a lot to talk about. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Morgan to tell us more about herself and the incredible work that she's doing with Burn Boot Camp. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Talk a little bit about the Burn Boot Camp story. You know, as we're recording this, we are getting ready to celebrate nine years of franchising. But Burn Boot Camp started in 2012 in a parking lot. And it was really born out of my husband and I both having different plans for our life and realizing that we needed to have a plan B. So kind of, I'll take you back before 2012 when we started in a parking lot and him and I grew up together. We met when we were 12 years old, so in sixth grade, and we became really great friends. Eventually we started dating. We were high school sweethearts. He went and played baseball and his goal was to make it to the big leagues and I went on to get my degree in food marketing and I got a job at the Kellogg company. So I was selling Pop-Tarts and cereal, which is really cool because where we're from, that's where they're headquartered. So we grew up smelling cereal every morning. And so that was my plan A and in his was to be in the big leagues. And we kind of both were, we were together, we were supporting each other, but we were on very different tracks. And of course, at this time we were just, we were just dating and and then eventually he, he did propose and we became fiancés. But Nonetheless, Devin got released because that's what happens. When you're in the minor leagues, you you go to practice one day and you're cut, you know? And so that was when his dreams were crushed. And I was actually in a in a great spot in my career. I was working a job down in Naples, Florida, and I had just gone in for a promotion to Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm on a high. I'm like, hey, I got you. I'm, I'm going to support you. We're good. Like, what do you want to do next? And that's when he really dug deep and he's like, listen, I, I love fitness. I've always been an athlete. I want to give back to people and I want to do it by myself. I want to be an entrepreneur. So he dabbled in some personal training and like big box gyms. But then when we moved up to Charlotte, he was like, I want to start my own business. And, but we were 24. So when you're 24 years old and you're not making a lot of money or you have one income and you don't have a lot of you know, business history, no proven success. Not many people are going to give you a lease to start a business. So that was our situation. We had $600 that we were willing to invest in fitness equipment. And Devin started doing this out of a parking lot outside of a gymnastics center. So what he ended up doing was finding some like-minded businesses because we knew we wanted to be in a, in a space that impacted women and kind of really hone in on that niche of like a really intense workout, but for that provides community and provides a culture where women feel accepted because, you know, in personal training, you see a lot in these big, big box gyms. They're just not very inviting for women and for men too. But I think specifically it can be incredibly intimidating and competitive and cold. And he knew that he didn't want to build that culture with burn boot camp. So Anyways, we were focused on women and moms specifically. So we're in this gymnastic studio. We are working out in the morning inside when they weren't doing any um, classes. And then we were doing the, the parking lot in the afternoon. And so I'll kind of fast forward that parking lot turned into five different parking lots in the Charlotte, greater Charlotte area to me quitting my job at Kellogg's and joining him full time to brick and mortarings, both all five of those. So we flipped them. You know, we had enough income coming in. We had enough business proof. We had some really great landlords that trusted us. And then we were owning and operating five locations here in the Charlotte area. And we really approached fitness just in a different way. It was not just about the 45 minutes that you can get here. And that was a great product. Like we really wholeheartedly believe in our fitness product is superior but what we needed to focus on was really the community and the culture, right? And how do we bring like-minded women together or people that just don't have that community? And how do we make them feel safe here at Burn Boot Camp to come into a workout, whether they've never worked out in their life or they just had a baby and, you know, they're maybe feeling a little self-conscious about themselves. And so 
we wanted to create this invite, inviting experience for every single member that walked in and not make it just about what you lose and just about the aesthetic. And it was really about what can you gain when you come here? And so our mission and our mindset has really shifted and evolved over these last 12 years about how do we use fitness to create disciplines and to create habits that can build confidence inside the gym, but then also outside of the gym. And so, you know, that's that when we focus on the people and how you can serve them in a different way than they than they typically get served in that industry, I think you allow yourself to stand out. And so, you know, we had we had lots of people starting to come to us in, you know, 2014 and say, hey, I, I love Burn Boot Camp. I love what it's done to me. I love how it's impacted my marriage. You know, I've got my husband come in on the weekends now. Can I bring this to another community? Like, how do we help you guys spread the mission? And so that's where the idea of franchising really came in. And so in 2015, we became a, a national franchise. And like I mentioned earlier, that's nine years ago. And here we sit with almost 400 doors opened. We're in 400 states. I'm sorry, we're in 41 states. And, you know, we've got another 200 or so in development. So our goals are big now, you know, where I'm now the CEO. Devin is the visionary. We have an entire team of just under 100 people at our headquarters to serve our franchise community. And I've had three children along the way. So anyways, I've been speaking a lot. I'll kind of let you get to, to get to my questions. but. That is kind of me in a quick 30, three minute intro. Wow. No, I'm, you could have kept going because I'm jotting down so many notes because we're going to have so many things that we could talk about. But oh my goodness, what an intro. And, you know, it's it sounds so much better when it's coming from you than me reading it off of my my paper. So thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that, because I think that as I'm jotting down half a page of notes already, there's so much to dive in and so much to talk about and really you know, honing in on that that woman, right? So that woman who doesn't feel confident, that woman who is going through different transitions in her life, that woman who is saying, I know that I need to do the things, but I don't know how. I don't know how to get started. I see all these other people doing X, Y, and Z, but is that for me? And so, you know, there's so many of these questions that we're going to dive into, but I think, you know, as you shared a lot about your current where you're at and how you grew Burn Boot Camp. I'm curious to know, was there a little bit of a backstory that kind of got you involved into the fitness space and really yeah. feeling like, hey, the, although this is my husband's vision and here I am being the ideal target audience, which is female and also a mom, yep. how does that fitness background tie into what you have got here? Because this is incredible. So we're going to we're going to unpack that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was also an athlete growing up. I was a three sport athlete, but after high school, I had no desire to play, nor did anyone ever ask me to. So, you know, I just say that to say that obviously fitness is in my background and I grew up around it. And so it's not an incredibly intimidating thing to me. But I think like a lot of other young women, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, you know, you feel this pressure, right, to look a certain way, to fit in a certain box. And when you don't, then you beat yourself up. At least that was my experience. And so, you know, me being a part of Brand Boot Camp was really first and foremost out of necessity for helping Devin. He was working, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week and, and doing a lot of the training. And I was like, hey, how can I help you? You know, how can I support you in the mornings before I go to work or the evenings or the weekends? And so that's that's where I kind of noticed he needed some relief. And I'm like, okay, I can help you. I can support you. So I got I went and got my CPT. And I started training like a couple camps a week just to give his voice a break and just to give him a break. And I really started to see the transformations within, you know, these women that would come in with, you know, their head down, you know, their their eyes down, lacking confidence. And then by the end of that 45 minutes, you know, they're getting high fives, they're getting their name, you know, I'm saying their name, I'm, you know, I'm pushing them relatively to wherever their fitness level is. And so I started to see these mini transformations. And I was really pulled towards that type of work versus my desk job in my nine to five job at Kellogg's. And so really, it was a shift for me just seeing the transformation and the impact I could have positively on people. And then I would go work my day job. And I was like, talking about 
frosted flakes and pop tarts. And I was like, this feels really conflicted. Like here I am, a, you know, a personal trainer telling people not to eat this. And then <laughs> this is my job. So that's really like what initially pulled me into it. And so, but I will say this, like all that self-doubt came back, like flooding in again when I did quit my job and I was getting ready to open my own gym. So one of the flips from parking lot to brick and mortar was going to be my gym. And then Devin had his gym. So we both kind of had our own communities that we were building. And I was going to be, you know, the owner and the lead trainer of Cornelius, North Carolina. And so I had like 12 weeks or so to kind of do the the construction and just get the gym ready and like really go full time. And that's when I was like, I got to do a bikini show. I got to compete for, you know, I got to, I got to look like that. I got to train like that. I'm going to be this trainer. I, I have to do all that to be respected because the way I look right now, like nobody's going to look at me and be like, oh yeah, she's, she's my personal trainer. And so all these, like all these feelings of just self-doubt and low self-belief in the way I looked crept in. And so what did I do? I signed up for a bikini competition. Devin used to compete. And so he was going to do it with me. And you know, it was really exciting. And I was like following all the, all, you know, all these bikini competitors and doing what they're doing. And I started to kind of see myself just shift to a really unhealthy relationship with food, exercise, and then even more self-doubt in my body because I was, I was doing my boot camps, and then I was also running, you know, fasted cardio. I was eating like 1,200 or less calories, you know, counting every calorie, counting every macro, weighing my food. I was doing it all because that's what I thought I needed to do. But for me, it just created a lot of unhealthy, unrealistic ways to get healthy. So I remember one day I was looking in the mirror and I was like eight weeks out right? Because you always measured it by how many weeks out you were. And I remember doing like a selfie and like taking a picture and just like zooming in on my stomach and like feeling like just so unfulfilled and just being like, oh, like I'm doing all this stuff and like I'm not getting the results that I thought I was going to get. And I just, I was hating my body. And I had just an aha moment. I went home and I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is not authentic to me. This is not what I want to do. And this is not how I want to lead my community of women is by doing things unrealistically, but then just telling them to do 45 minutes of boot camp. you know? So like, it just didn't feel, it didn't feel good for me. So I quit the show. I, I never even competed. And, and by the way, I looked amazing. Like if I go back to that picture today, I, I, you know, it's sad to think that I was like, I'm unhappy with that. So I just had a moment where I said, I have opportunity. I've been given a platform to be a woman and to lead other women. And I need to make sure this is very authentic to how I want to lead because that's just who I am. That's one of my core values is authenticity. And I don't want to give false hope for somebody who because at this point, I had been working with people that had just had a baby. I had been working with people that just, you know, got off the couch and had never worked out, like, and had the courage to walk through the doors. And so I was like, I don't want to give them this unrealistic expectation of what they should be either. So that's really, that's my fitness story. And I think that a lot of that, like, that was my first time really saying, okay, I need to redevelop a relationship with food, with exercise with my, my, my body image. And so I did a lot of work in that space. And then I got pregnant with my first daughter, my first child. And I remember them being postpartum and a lot of those same feelings coming in of like, I got back on the mic and here I am. I, I, you know, still look three months pregnant, four months pregnant. And it was, I was very self-conscious once again, because I was like all the new people that are coming in my gym. I'm like, did they know I just had a baby? You know, like, so then I felt that pressure again to kind of go to extremes to lose the, the baby weight and bounce back and like do all the things. And so that was another learning lesson for me of like just reminding myself my influence and just to, to take that seriously. And so all my other pregnancies, I have two other kids. I share a lot. I'm very vulnerable on my social media because I want people to understand that it's not normal to just bounce back. You know, it can take, it takes work and it takes, it's harder the second and the third time around. And 
So now I've really leaned into my own experiences, whether that's good, bad, hard, easy, and just tried to lead that way and share that way. And I think that that's refreshing for a lot of the members that are a part of this brand. And, you know, when I'm making decisions now as a CEO, I always, you know, keep that, that backstory and that history and just what is, what's the environment and what's the, what do we really want to be celebrating here? Is this something that I'd want my daughter to also celebrate? So now again, it's my responsibility to have this platform and to, to treat it wisely. I love everything that you just said, literally just like jotting down more notes, but also I feel like you took pages out of my own book. We have so much in common in, in the sense of like, you know, getting into health and fitness for what I always say is like all the wrong reasons. It was for me, it was because I had such a strong dislike for my body because of the self-image, the self-doubt, the self-esteem, horrible, horrible relationship with food extreme dieting, extreme workouts, and indirectly how it was a relationship with myself. Man, this is like, you know, obviously also as a, a former fitness competitor as well. Man, it's funny how we get into the works that we do with a whole different outcome or expectation and realize that it turned out even better than we could have ever, ever imagined. I just love that you shared all this because look, looking at the through line and following your journey and I'm sure that you see this because you live it, but sometimes it's like, because we live it, we don't see it. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, this was already almost predestined before you even knew it. And so now taking your through line and your story and your journey and realizing that, hey, listen, I, get, I don't even want to finish my competition because it doesn't feel in alignment with who I am and what I'm teaching. So there's this, this you know, it feels disingenuous of like who I am. And so leading with through authenticity transparency and vulnerability very much to my core that's who I am and my my also value is integrity so it's like I have those values that I hold to myself and so like everything runs through that and I think that is such something to definitely be noted because I don't think many people really run through that filter or that lens so kudos for you just saying listen this isn't the direction because that's not who I stand for mm -hmm. so I love that you shared all of that and you know when we talk about your through line coming up as an athlete even in high school how incredibly important. And I think for those listening who are like, great, I don't even lift. I don't even go to workouts. I don't even go to the gym. I don't even, what are these people talking about? What fitness, and I think you can attest to this too, is what fitness in the terms of whether you're a competitor, a worker outer, whatever that thing is for you, it teaches you such discipline, self-control, self-respect, mm -hmm. self-awareness. So it teaches you so much, and I could go on, but about all the self-attributes. And it's not from a place of like vanity or self, you know, yes, there's insecurities that eventually lead us to that. But what fitness does is helps us sharpen and refine the tools that we already have, those gifts and skills and abilities so that we come out bigger, better, stronger, and mm -hmm. not just the physical, but in our mindset, in our how we manage our emotions to our spiritual health and well-being and like who we identify at the core of like, why are we here on this earth, right? We're beyond just our bodies. There's something greater for us. And if we don't look beyond just the mirrored reflection, we can't see what's actually deep and within. Um, and so I, I commend you for that because, you know, us kind of having similar stories in two different parallels, I can attest to so much of what you, you know, you battled with, with like, you know, self-belief, self-doubt, you know, self-esteem. And, you know, for me, it was like, if I didn't have things perfect, I would beat myself up. And that's, you know, pulling uh, mm -hmm. pages out of my book, Chasing Perfection. Mm -hmm. It was like, so if I had this outcome, this goal, and let's just use the, the, the fitness competition, for example, it's like, if we knew that we couldn't do it perfectly, then why would we even bother doing it? And I think that you kind of pulled a little bit of a different, but similar analogy is there as well. Because it's like, if I couldn't do this in a way that felt authentic to me to be a leader, then I'm not going to do it at all. Me, yeah. it was like, if I if I could lead myself to get through this competition, then I can prove to myself that I am capable of leading and doing these things. But my competition took a whole different backstory behind that. So for those who are listening, I competed in 2012, also came back in, to stage in 15. But between those three years was a big learning curve and a big physical limitation that set me back. And I had to have surgery and blew up my whole game plan that right. didn't pan out in the first place. 
But when I took the stage back at 15, it was just now from a place of redemption and recovery. And to know that that no matter what you strive to achieve, as long as you have the win internally, yes. then yes. that is all that matters. And so yeah. you've already kind of won in that uh, caliber as well. Yeah. And I, whenever I talk about that story too, it's important that I also say like, I am not shaming that in like the, the competition or talking negatively about it because I, I do recognize that some people are doing it in a very healthy way. Some people are doing it for the right reasons, right. To overcome whatever they need to and, and maybe prove something to themselves. And, and I believe that fitness is an anchor to your life. Right. And, and whether that's, you're doing a 45 minute workout you're, you know, on the treadmill, you're walking or you're, you know, competing at a high level in a fitness competition. Like I believe that when you can anchor your, your day with something that's hard, right. It's, it teaches you discipline. It, it grounds you back to doing things for yourself, taking care of yourself and it helps you mentally, right. There's so much science behind it. And so for, for me, you know, if someone comes into the gym and they want to lose 20 pounds, great. I'm going to help you lose 20 pounds. Like if that's your goal and if you have that goal for all the right reasons, right. But in the, in, in the byproduct of all of that is going to be so much more than just losing 20 pounds. Like you're going to, you're going to gain this confidence that you've maybe never had. You're going to, you know, empower yourself because you're going to learn things about nutrition and you're going to learn how to challenge yourself. And on the, by the way, if you come to Burn Boot Camp, you're going to meet this amazing community with like-minded women that, and men that want to lift you up and support you. And there's no competition, you know, in our four walls. And I, I get the opportunity to hear stories from our members. And it's like, you know, I came for the workout, but then like I stayed because I met my lifelong friends here. And so it's really like everything that you said I think what unlocks that is finding your people and like finding that community, whether it's at a boutique fitness center or it's at a big box gym or it's at an at home digital app that you have and you've connected with people. But that's what stops a lot of people, right? It is they can't stick to something or they don't have that that thing that motivates them because they don't have a good environment around them mm-hmm. to keep them going. Yes, I love I love that you you know, brought up the word anchor because that's such a such a strong word, I think, just even in my own vocabulary, because when I think of something anchored, that is like tethered down. There's no removing it. Like that is where things get rooted in, and pulled from. You know, for me, it was like anchoring myself, you know, obviously through fitness and, and faith are a big part of what I do. But the anchoring in my journey has actually been the catalyst and the birth of why the confident woman even exists. Because Mm-hmm. Believe me, I was the least confident person you could imagine. Yeah. Like people who meet me now are like, man, but you're so confident. I'm like, but you didn't know me back then. I yeah. was the person who shuffled into, well, first of all, I wouldn't even go to the gym. But then when I had enough courage to at least step foot in the gym, I was finding the dark corner, mm-hmm. pulling up my phone, looking up some YouTube videos, trying to figure out like how to, and just making sure that I had no eye contact with anyone because I was so embarrassed and so ashamed and that was like my gym intimidation Um, and so I had zero discipline zero any of that stuff like I was completely new and I think for anyone listening it's like listen you're not going to be confident from the get-go like confidence comes through consistent action it's showing up rep after rep after rep and you consistently build upon that and this is like for this conversation why fitness and health is so what's the word I'm looking forward to blanket basically everything that we do in life because how we're showing up for ourselves is sheer discipline and so when we can start showing up for ourselves building that esteem building that confidence building a consistent habit laying brick by brick we're building a solid foundation to which we build life upon right so it's almost like you know you can look into the successes of what burn boot camp is right now but if you and your husband didn't have the foundation of of you know the strength aspect of it through fitness would mm-hmm. you have the same business that you have today? Yeah, no, no. Right. Not, and I love when you say like laying it brick by brick because, you know, it's it's not always going to be that it's not there overnight. None of it is. Right. Business, fitness, any of it, right? But you learn, you learn through every single brick and you got to stay consistent. And And what the bricks are in my mind is what's in control, mm-hmm. right? What are you in control of? And so when I think about, business and fitness, 
you are in control. And a lot of people don't have that mindset. They don't feel like they're in control of the success in the gym and in life, whether that's your job, whether that's building something. But once you can start to take that, you know, responsibility to say, hey, when I wake up today, what's in my control? Well, guess what? Moving your body is in your control. Making time for yourself is in your control. Now, I listen, I have three kids and I run a crazy business, like, but it's still in my control if it's important to me. When I was building this business, there's so many things out of my control that can come in and try to, you know, distract me or push my business down or not allow it to grow. But when you just focus on what's in your control and laying those bricks down, laying that foundation down, as things come, it's harder to knock you over, right? Because you've done it. You've done the work. And that's that's really what I would encourage people every single day to do is say, like, what's in my control to get me closer and closer to my goal? Right. I love that you brought that up because, it, you know, the aspect of taking control is ultimately comes down to the power of choice because every day we're gifted each day, right? So we have a choice to move our body. We have a choice to which foods we decide to ingest. We have a choice as to what music we listen to, what we watch on TV, who we surround ourselves with. Everything comes down to the power of choice. And that is something that is it, indirectly, this is your, you know, power of control. Yeah. And, you know, to attest to that, it's like, you know, as you start looking at the taking personal inventory and accountability of one's life, I think that for many of us, we're ultimately chasing, you know, to pull again, pieces from my book is like this unattainable carrot of something that doesn't yet exist. Because mm -hmm. if we're in, if we're viewing life through our own perspective and lens, we're only seeing what we're able to achieve, right? So like, I want that, I can do that. And, and we're chasing something externally. But What's really cool about this, and this is just, uh, you know, a huge epiphany in my own personal transformation and, and fitness journey was that everything that I longed for or desired externally was already within me. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. That yeah. ultimately is what fitness has taught me through the discipline, through the challenges, through working through the hardships, because it wasn't about finding that perfect body or the perfect life. It was about what if I can create and cultivate that for myself? What if it started with just self-acceptance, yeah. which then grew into self-love? And now it wasn't about putting my body through extremes. Um, again, we're not, we're not talking just about bodybuilding, but I mean, give me any workout. I was going like balls to the wall kind of stuff. Like I was going hard on all the stuff and then I would be like, wait, where's the results? Because it wasn't something that was sustainable, but it was something that one could take so much pride in knowing that their hard work, their discipline, their action, their choices had led to the fulfillment that is within. And yeah. I think that that's one of the biggest lessons that both, you know, Morgan and I are sharing here is, is we can build these big successful businesses. We can build these perfect bodies. We can build these incredible communities. But if there's not this sense of free, uh, freedom or fulfillment from what we've created or built or accomplished or achieved, all yeah, that means yeah. is just we just did something off of our to-do list and we'll keep moving on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. not our goal. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's a huge, yeah. uh, huge plus in my book here is like, yeah. something. I'm like, yes, she gets it too. It's awesome. Yeah. And, and I think too, you know, when you talk about that, because really what you're saying is you can do all these things, but if you're not fulfilled, then really you've just like put yourself in prison and you're unhappy. And I think that that can be very confusing for people because you haven't really defined what success means for you, right? You've let other people define it for you and that other people could be your parents, your grandparents, society, what a professor said in school, what your friends are doing, what, you know, so what, what social media says is successful. And so be very careful before you start chasing something to, to take a pulse check and say, what does success look like to me? Because it's different for everybody. Financial and time freedom can be different things for you and I. And so, but if I haven't defined what that is, then I'm not really clear on why I'm doing all the things that I'm doing. And I've, I, I, my, I've definitely chased things that society told me to chase and like, like doing a bikini show, but I've done it in other areas when I was younger and I'll probably still do it sometimes. Right. Because we all make mistakes or we all think something is flashy and shiny here and there, but I've done it and I've watched a lot of other people think they need to accomplish something or do something, not because of their own heart and desire, but because of someone else 
or -hmm. something else was placed on them. Yeah. I love that you brought up success because that's actually something that's very current in the space that I'm in right now. It's kind of like, you know, when I start, I don't know, I'm just very like a deep reflective person. (laughs) Yeah. I got a lot of time in my head, but you know, it's, it's something that comes up a lot because it's like, you know, why did you name the book Chasing Perfection? And it was just like, you know, at that point it was like, we're all chasing something that doesn't exist because how one defines something is completely subjective it, it, to each their own, right? So it's, you know, it's one of those, and the ambiguity and the subjectiveness and the personal meanings and all these things. So it's like, what is healthy? You have yeah. to define it for yourself. What is yeah. success? Define it for yourself. What does freedom look like? You have to define it for yourself. And especially when we go into like fitness, you know, for me, I was that person who tried everything because I saw everybody else do all the things like, you know, marathon running and running in general and like playing sports and yoga and swim and uh, Pilates, hiking, all these biking and, and like mud runs. Like I used to right. do runs and I like think back and I'm just like, I didn't, I hated doing those. Yeah. You know? Like who likes to get mud all over them? Some people do, but I did it because I thought that that was an extreme exactly. way. It was like, now yeah. I just have time, but I don't think if I were asked to do a mud run, I don't think I'm your girl. <laughs> exactly. But I think, you know, it kind of our, you know, what, what we're trying to say here is like, you might have to go see your, through a series of crappy things yeah to realize you know pick through what assortments of of options and things that life has to offer is the metaphor so it's like yeah I despise running I am not built for running after my back surgery that was you know they gave me a whole laundry list of things I cannot do and that is the only thing that I'm like cool not (laughs) not because I can't I don't like it yeah I've spent like 20 years trying to be a runner on a body and a frame and a build that was not designed for running yeah. So it's trying to force yourself, you know, the square peg and round hole analogy, trying to force yourself into something that's not suited for you. So when you look back at the relationships that you have with, you know, exercise, is it because you're trying to cram into something that isn't suited for you? Yeah. Maybe. And so maybe that's the pause. But the question would be, well, what activity do you enjoy that you can go at it and sustain that for the long haul? So now you build a healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, after picking through a series of just don't like that, don't like that, that's not for me, you find something that works. And for me, it was fitness, I mean, or weightlifting. I absolutely love lifting weights. It makes me feel like a badass. I'm strong. I'm confident. I watch how my body takes shape. And that's really kind of the draw that got got me into bodybuilding for all the right reasons, because my strong dislike for my body, I said, wait a minute. So I can actually change the shape of it through building muscle and mm-hmm. definition mm-hmm. and I could I could create this like as a sculptor and I was yeah. like I didn't know I could do that because that was never taught to me and like all the other things so that was kind of the attraction to come back to bodybuilding for the right reasons because it was a way for me to actually carve out and create something that feels so so confident and strong and powerful and to know that yeah I did that by putting yeah. in the reps by yeah. choosing the right meals by taking care of my mental and emotional by incorporating rest, which we hear you can't build a business on sleeping because somebody else is building it while you're dreaming. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I'm I'm trying to live. Like, Like, there's a difference. I still got eight hours of sleep last night. Right, right. Validation. You can uh, certainly do it. (laughs) Right. So the whole context here is really to take, you know, beyond just fitness and beyond just the relationships with your food and yourself, but you're building your your foundation, which is going to be so strong and unshakable when you can build those pillars and the core habits and beliefs powered down to your identity and who you are. And yep. that's where you start building the success upon. Absolutely. On your own, that you can find out. Yeah. Well, because I'm sure like as you were saying, you know, you did that. It's like you built confidence in yourself, right? It had nothing to do with how your body looks. It was like, wow, look what I just did. If I just put the discipline, put, put it, put the work in, have discipline, you know, continue to push myself and challenge myself. I bet you saw enhancements in your entire, everywhere, everywhere in your life, my entire life exploded, you know? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the message that I, that I want to, and that's the vision that I want to paint for everyone when they interact with my brand is like, Hey, we're here as just one tool to propel you to do so much more in your life that's possible for you. Yeah. You just basically serve as a catapult because if you can 
if you can do this one thing well, and that's the one thing you do for yourself, take care of yourself from the inside out. Just think of how much better your relationships will be, your business, your marriage, your friendships, the way you talk to yourself, the things that you are now able to believe that are possible. You don't discount yourself. Like, I mean, gosh, it's like the world opens up and a whole like lens from like, for me personally, I went from like gray darkness to like bright, you know, and now I get people are like, oh, you're so like, you're always wearing those rose colored glasses. I'm like, no, because I know what it's, I lived in the deepest, darkest trenches and valleys for way too long. Yeah. That anything on the other side of that is a gift. I will yeah. take a hazy day over the darkness. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you're sharing here. And I know you, before we hit record, we were talking about some of the upcoming things that you have going on and some of your philosophies and beliefs, which are, I think are, <clears throat> you know, similar to what we're talking about building from the inside out. So I'd love for you to. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So Devin, my husband and I have, you know, co-authored a book that's coming out in June. So it's, it's on pre-order right now. And it's a lot of the same things that you and I have had the opportunity to talk about here. You know, it's about taking not just outer fitness, but also inner fitness. And how can we, how can we take our five core philosophies that we built Burn Boot Camp on like that into anyone that picks up the book and can really get started and not just taking care of your body, but also your, your mindset and your spirit, your spirit and you know, the nutrition and how do you surround yourself with the community? So you'll see in the book, just different philosophies, but also practical tips to take away to get started. Yes. And if you don't mind sharing, maybe you leave our listeners with a couple of your favorite tips from the book. Ooh, I know. It's like, how do I pick all of them? Yes. How do I pick all of them? You know, I think I'll just say in general, because I, I can't think of a specific tip that's in the book. I think it's just about expanding and broadening your mind to know that fitness is not just starting and stopping moving your body. There is so much more to health and wellness and physical fitness and emotional fitness and mental fitness. And it all takes work and it's not going to come overnight. It's going to be about building the foundation, right? And making sure that you've got all the components to give you the best path forward and, and to be successful. And so you know, stop siloing all of those things into different buckets and try to merge them together together and integrate that, right? Because when you can integrate all those things into your daily life and your practices, you're much more successful to have these things not just stick, but impact you in a deeper way. So I think that's the overall message and tip that I would give somebody if you're going to open that book is like be very open-minded to not just focusing on one piece of the pie, but focusing on all five. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And so when you can have that full, like, holistic aspect of living healthy from the inside out, man, does life feel so good, right? Because yeah. you don't feel like you're riding around on, like, a lopsided tire or something like that. Like, things feel like this is going smoother. We're moving closer to where we want to be in our life, whatever the goals and objectives are. But, you know, the cool thing is, is that you get to be that driver in the car and you get to create, you know, all these different facets and spokes on your terms. And that really is that superpower that you get to give yourself with and really the power of choice. So, you know, for us, for those that are listening, it's, you know, again, hopefully you hear this message loud and clear is that everything you desire and you want is already within. You Mm got to spend some time digging, searching and discovering that. And, you know, things that we seek out at outside us externally are just there to support as tools to help us get to where we need to be. But that's not going to be your ultimate answer. So of course, Meg, uh, you know, we got many listeners that are like, but how can I find out more about you? How can I follow along with you? So yeah, how people yeah. the best you? way to the best way to learn more about me and Burn Boot Camp is just head to our website, burnbootcamp.com. So we have, like I said, almost 400 doors that we have opened. And we also have a digital app. So if you're not near a burn boot camp, you can download our app. Um, you, you can give a, get a seven-day free test drive to the app, which is a 45-minute live Monday through Friday, but also 11 different categories to help you with your health and fitness. So burnbootcamp.com, and you can find a location near you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And of course, all of that will be in our show notes. So be sure to follow and just be a part of what they're doing because This is really making waves across our nation. And hopefully you hear Morgan's message today. You know, obviously CEO, 
behind this entire movement. She is passionate about it. She is driven and she wants to see you become your best and most confident self. So yeah, thank yeah. you, Morgan. Thanks for having me. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening. 